Welcome back to Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom. It's episode two, and we couldn't be more excited. It's myself, it's Johnny Palermo, back on the ones and twos. We've had a lot happen here in the last couple weeks, so we're not going to waste any time. We're going to kick right into it. We just had the week one of the NFL season, and if you didn't know, I also write for uh, a website called TWSN.net. It's a um, sports website, and I write about, I mean, uh, I say random things. Uh, I've written football, I've written written baseball, some gambling, basketball, uh, soccer. I think I wrote a soccer article in there, lots of things. But um, this year, right now, for the NFL season, I'm doing a bottom five power ranking. So it's the worst five teams uh, of the week or moving forward into the next week. Week ones, it got a little controversial. I had Tennessee Titans in at number five, being the fifth worst worst team in the NFL. Uh, They lived up to it um, with their brutal loss, 16-15, to the New Orleans Saints. They really didn't do anything to prove me wrong, despite people uh, saying they are coached far too well to be end up in the uh, bottom five of the NFL. And here I'm saying they have no future currently at quarterback on the roster. Um, they're an aging team. Um, prime example is uh, signing star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. Um, that was their key addition in the offseason. He is, he is, by definition, an aging wide receiver. So, um that's the deal. They've got talent. I mean, it, Hopkins is a playmaker, but he's not the guy that's going to um, be there, I guess, for the next five-plus years uh, to help move your offense forward. So Derrick Henry, he, I mean, this is probably, well, were we on the back end of the prime? I mean, he's still incredible, but we're in the back end of that. And Ten Hill's just not the QB anymore, at least not going to be. So I'm saying, yes, they're good. Yes, they're going to be competitive but not playoff bound and certainly heading in a direction where this team is not going to be uh, relevant um, with the current makeup of their roster uh, here in the next year or two. So they have a new stadium on the horizon. I I am predicting they will be in a rebuild here, uh, even with Coach Vrabel you know, involved, but they will be in a rebuild here and gearing up to be uh, really good and a contender again once the new stadium opens. It's kind of how it works, right? So... Anyway, I was proven right with the uh, 16-15 loss to the New Orleans Saints, who didn't even have their best playmaker on offense. Uh, Alvin Kamara, he was he's suspended, obviously. So now we had just released Week Two's bottom five. That also has uh, stirred some folks up. Titans moved up to number four. I think they earned that with their loss. But at number five is a team that has that has Super Bowl aspirations. The Cincinnati Bengals. So I've been called a troll. And I'll tell you right now, I've never been called a troll. Leprechaun? Sure. The hair picks. Like that 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 fits, man. I put on anything green and don't put a hat on this head. And yeah, sure. Leprechaun all day. Alright? Troll? No. No, no, no. Maybe when my hair was longer. And I didn't wash it for a couple of days, and it could kind of stand up straight. I kind of looked like those uh, trolls that were real popular in the uh, 90s. But no, I'm not trolling. I'm calling as I see it. This is a team that looked really, really bad in Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland took care of business. I st- I don't buy Cleveland. But man, did the Bengals sure make them look good. And, and Joe Burrow, coming off of the richest contract in NFL history, and he put together his career low um, in passing and uh, his worst performance as a starting NFL quarterback. So um, everything fit. I mean, even even Jamar Chase, after the game, his mind was kind of uh, boggled by this. You know, he, he called out the Browns and called them Elves, and he just couldn't believe they lost the Elves. You did lose the Elves. So now you need to be in the bottom five. And this may be the only time they ever make an appearance in the bottom five because this, this team does have talent, and, you know, they're going to figure it out. And they started 0-2 last year. It's happening again, right? But I'm not a troll. Leprechaun maybe. Not a troll. Not today. <laughs> 
Johnny Palermo's been called a troll before. I know that for a fact. He's got that kind of little troll-looking face. You know? Kind of goonish. It's okay. You're my friend. Let's see. What else has been going on? I was on a stand-up show a week ago Friday night. Uh, it's a show called Comedy Wars that was at Backline in downtown Omaha, Nebraska. Show went well. Had four good minutes. Felt really good about it. Here's the fun thing about um, about that night. I wrote that four minutes that day. It was real life experiences of things that um, that happened. I mean that day, and um, I find that fun. I find that interesting. I find that challenging. That doesn't make me a better comic though. Like I'm. I need to work on my material over and over and over and over and over again. I understand that, and I'm going to do that. But in this particular instance, I had something stuck in my head and kind of needed to get it out. And it was kind of therapeutic to be able to talk about it and have people laugh with me on it. So um, that was fun. We're going to hear a clip from that here in just a little bit. Um, But, man, it was a good show. Uh, I met some folks for the first time. Clem, ah, he is funny as hell. He... He's who I went up against. So Comedy Wars is you've got head two head-to-head matchups, and then winners of those first two rounds move on. They go head-to-head, and then the winner of that round then heads to the finals to uh, go up against the champion from the month before. And uh, Cle- I went head-to-head with Clem. He advanced uh, to the next round. Hilarious. I, I have never seen him before. He's uh, I, uh, TikTok. is TikTok. you got to check him out on his TikTok. I will get it here. I'll put it on my Twitter. I'll put it on the Twitter and uh and share it for you but man his one-liners were just incredible and then he break into like a story about his kids and um it, he had this vest with these uh it was all metal so you know he was ready for war he was he was ready for it meanwhile i'm talking about expired milk so there was a difference the crowd <laughs> definitely was um very much into what he was given and uh you know it, should have won, you know, should have won. And I would love to have seen him in the finals. I think he was prepared to uh, put on a great show against Richie B in the finals. But another time, I'm sure he will be there. He is hilarious, and I hope to do uh, more shows with Clem uh, in the future. But So we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But first, let's take a quick break. This episode of Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom, is brought to you by Celebrate Your Memorial. Have you ever been curious on what your family, friends, and coworkers will say at your funeral? Be curious no more with Celebrate Your Memorial. At Celebrate Your Memorial, take a week-long vacation while we set the table for a memorial of your life. Everyone you've ever known will be invited, memorial plan, and a plenty of time for everyone to say their final words. Once they are completed, you'll proudly return from the dead to thank everyone for attending. Open or closed casket options are available. Celebrate Your Memorial, a proud sponsor of Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom. Now back to the show. So, Johnny, all I'm saying is right now, if you look at all the teams after week one in the NFL, the Cincinnati Bengals did not perform as a Super Bowl favorite. Okay, They didn't perform as an AFC favorite. They didn't even perform as an AFC North favorite favorite they performed like one of the bottom five teams in the nfl and if you look at the betting odds they're slipping now they're now 13 one shot to make the super bowl which is still you know top six but there's teams jumping ahead of them now as they should that's all i'm getting at if anybody has a problem with that then i guess come up with your own rankings (laughs) I have my own rankings, and I and I believe I wrote even in the article, one of the basis for how I'm determining the bottom five is vibes, and the Bengals did not have good vibes. They were soaking wet. It was raining, and they were in Cleveland. It was terrible conditions for them. They're a team that really needs to play indoors, frankly. I'm now comparing the Bengals, the 2023 Bengals, to those really good Saints teams with Sean Payton, Drew Brees, Darren Sproles. Yep. Put them outside. Gets a little dicey. All right, that's a terrible take. I'm going to take that one back. That one, that one's not real. 
Johnny, please cut that from the from the show. So I had the show the other night, Comedy Wars. It was a great time. I just want to say thanks again to uh, William Watts III for having me again. I've done this show a few times, and every time I do the show, it's fun to see how William introduces me uh, before I come on stage. Um, he legitimately acts like he found me on the streets and um, <laughs> he felt bad. Uh, so he opened up four minutes uh, for this poor guy uh, to come on stage. I, I do appreciate. It. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm not on a lot of shows right now, so I do appreciate his time. But um, you would think he he saw me on a street corner begging for stage time, and um, he's my savior. But he he's really funny when he introduces me. He tries to get the crowd going because um, you know my humor sometimes is uh, grocery store related or Crohn's disease related, so it's not always the most fun. Uh, topics to talk about, which maybe that's that's where I'm going wrong because it's comedy and you're supposed to make people laugh. <laughs> I don't know. This is the stuff Johnny tells me to talk about, but here we are. Here, anyway, here's the intro uh, William gave me the other night. First couple contestants are Jeremy Odom and Clem Jameson. And so coming up to the stage first has been somebody who has competed on Comedy Wars and didn't do so well and has beat himself up nonstop, thoroughly, 24-7 until he got this fucking opportunity to come back up on stage in front of you people. So when he gets done with his four minutes, whether he does well or not, I want you to fucking get loud for this motherfucker. Everybody put your hands together for Jeremy Odom. Natalie, put four minutes on the I love when William introduces me every time. He makes it seem like I'm a make-away kid. <laughs> like, he saw me outside, and he's like, yeah, that one's dying inside. <laughs> Before the yeah. So let's just break this down from the top. William says, I've been on the show numerous times, and I have. I think that's the third time competing, and one time I was brought in as a special guest. He said, I didn't do so well last time. I know for a fact, after every show... He's told me I did really good. The audience laughs. Now, do all the punchlines hit? No, I'm working on stuff, man. I'm working on stuff. But, uh, you know, he, he said I didn't do so well. I don't know what time, what, like, what, which, which show is he referencing necessarily? I, I really do think the last one was pretty good. And uh, it really felt like he was begging for the audience to uh, be there for me. Um, <laughs> I did feel like a Make-A-Wish child without the like terminal disease. Like He was making it seem like, I really need you guys to laugh today for this guy in particular. The rest of them, they're going to make you laugh because that's what they do. But this guy, please, this guy right here, Jeremy, he needs it more than you know. It's all good. At least I had that. Uh, was able to have that moment at the front, and you know, really express myself. <laughs> Thanks, William, though, for having me on the show. I do really enjoy that show. I love the format, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I had a lot of fun with all the comics uh, there. And anytime you get to see Richie B um, tell jokes, I mean, it's it's a good night. So at the top of the show, I was telling you how I had written the material, uh, the four minutes for Comedy Wars uh, that day. And it's actually, it's uh, all based off a true story that happened to me that morning. So um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, I am your poor man's Ryan Seacrest. I got like five jobs, one of them being a grocer. And I woke up, I wake up early, driving into work, and I get a text from my wife and she had screenshotted a complaint from a customer who had been shopping in my area of the store uh, the night prior saying beware you know if you're going to shop at this store that this is happening 
And she was saying that there was gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons of milk that were expired on the shelf. And she had to basically go on a hunt to find one that was not expired. And I'm like, great, like, this is going to be a problem. But how, how is this possible? Because I was just there the day before, and this was not the case. So immediately I go in, check the shelf, and there's nothing out of date on the shelf. Go into the cooler, and there's two gallons in the cooler that were dated for, to, for that day, for today. So then I go about my business. I'm just, you know, filling eggs. I do enjoy the eggs. You know, there's really nothing better than looking at the entire egg case when it's completely full, faced, ready for business. I don't know why, but I love a good egg case. I just don't. <laughs> Always have. Yeah, no, no real true way to explain my love for the eggs, but... um I don't know. Someday I'll need to like talk that out with a therapist or something because, man, I love the eggs. It's always one of the first things I do in the morning is get that egg case up and going. Anyways, the milk. There, there was nothing out of date of the milk. So I'm going about my business, and then I get a call from my boss. And he says he saw this post that he got sent from his boss. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I saw it. I checked. Everything's good i mean there was two gallons pulled i don't know if that's related or not but you know everything's good and he's like all right just make you know blah 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 boss stuff then i get i I just happen to walk by another manager in the store and he says hey if you didn't know and he tells me the same story all right so i explained again i know i checked that there's nothing wrong then I come across another manager who actually was there the night prior who spoke to this very customer. And yes, he did pull those two gallons that would have been not expired when he pulled them, but they were expired the next day. So that day I was talking to him. And he said that she had just mentioned that there was a couple and he went back and grabbed them and all good. So everybody did their part. Why? Why does keyboard confidence come into play with folks sometimes with things that just don't matter? What was she protecting or saving by complaining about the milk that night and over-exaggerating, right? All she did was put me in a position where it's like office space, you know, with the, with the TPS reports, and I've, I'm, I'm hearing about it from all angles about uh, and in the the worst part is then the the post then becomes a thread of multiple complaints coming from all angles that may or may not have anything to do with each other and they all could be exaggerated or they could all be truthful who knows but one little thing spins out of control into a hundred other million little problems and uh, I mean at the end of the day I can't have that milk so close dated on the shelf but it was it didn't have to be exaggerated and she complained she didn't complain she brought it to everyone someone's attention and that it was taken care of that night there's got to be something done with folks like this you know in a say you know no one needs to be harmed i'm not i'm not calling for anybody to be harmed but something has to be done so as i was working that day I wrote four minutes of material on this, and, and this is what I did at the at uh, Comedy Wars. So let me tell you, let me let me play for you, Johnny. Hopefully, you can roll this for him. This is what I come up with on what I'd like to do uh, with the folks who come come a little strong with their keyboard confidence. Johnny, roll the tape. You know, I, I don't hold grudges. Uh, more than ten years, really. Usually. <laughs> But I really thought today that I was going to dedicate myself in the afterlife to ghosting this person. <laughs> and not in like a scary way, and you know, I'm not really into that. I don't want to haunt their dreams. I, I can care less about that. But boy, am I going to be annoying. <laughs> I am, I am going to ghost for spite, right? I'm, I'm going to be in the passenger seat when you're driving. And when you're rocking Taylor Swift and she gets to the bridge, I'm changing the song. <laughs> When we're eating, I'm eating cereal every time, and I'm slurping the shit out of that milk.
You know, it's tough seeing the hate online. We used to mean something. Remember 2020? Grocers were essential. <laughs> Can you imagine if you had somebody that was just had that keyboard confidence and they were just bugging the shit out of you? So then you dedicated your afterlife to just ghosting them out of spite. Just being there, you know, when they needed quiet time. Maybe they're reading. Maybe they're trying to sleep. Take a little nap. And you're just right there next to their ear clicking a pen over and over and over again. Johnny, you don't know anything about annoying people, do you? Yeah, I didn't think so. You never annoy me, I'll tell you that much. You little troll-looking bastard. <laughs> For real, though, 2020, man, we were we were with the elite. We were right there with the doctors, all the healthcare people, the emergency care. We were essential. We had to go to work. It turns out y'all just wanted to eat, so you tricked us to go into work, and you called us very important. We felt some pride. And then once the pandemic slowed down, you know, why is this egg cracked? Why is that milk dated for tomorrow? Yeah, I see you. I see all of you. Don't you worry. The afterlife's when I'll get my comeback. Mm-hmm. Don't think I let this one slide. Unless you, you know, keep this going past 10 years. I don't hold grudges. I just don't. Johnny, we're getting towards the end of the show. I definitely think next week we're going to need our first guest. So I'm going to put that one on you, brother. You're going to book our first guest. I'll be the talent. I'll be the one interviewing. But you book it, sir, and we shall make it happen. We're also going to watch the Bengals either rebound or solidify themselves as a bottom five team in the NFL. I think it's going to be the latter. Because we 0-2 last year, remember. So I'm not too far off here on how they start the season. Plus, they have a tough game against the Ravens. The only thing they got going for them is they are at home. Okay? Bengal fans. It's not all doom and gloom. You're at home at least. Got that going for you. You get to rule the jungle. It's all right. My team, Chargers, I mean, we'll score 40 points and... So we, we've scored, with 92 points, 93 points, something like that in the last three games played. And we're owned three in those three games. So no defense, man. We, we have talent all over the field. Talent all over the field. I, You know what? Right now, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to tweet something at the team. Tell them that their defense stinks. Stinks like expired milk. This episode of Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom, is brought to you by Celebrate Your Memorial. Have you ever wanted to know exactly how your family and friends really feel? Be curious no more with Celebrate Your Memorial. At Celebrate Your Memorial, you'll take a week-long vacation while we set the table for a memorial of your life. Everyone you've ever known will be invited, memorial planned, and plenty of time for everyone to say their final words. You'll be able to watch and take attendance on who came to your memorial, who said what, who's crying, and what did they wear. Once the memorial is completed, you'll proudly return from the dead to thank everyone for attending. Open or closed casket options are available. Celebrate your memorial, a proud sponsor of Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom. Hey, Johnny, where are you getting these sponsors?